Greetings, my fellow AV programmers. So here's a quick one to give you an idea of what it would be like to create a user interface using Apple's Xcode. So you can make your own iPhone app, for example, and use that as an alternative user interface. So I'm going to try to go pretty fast so we don't get too deep in the weeds, just to give you a feel of what it would be like. So I've got Xcode installed on a Mac, and I said right here, file, file, new project. And that brings us to this page here. We'll say single view application and next. We'll give it a name, call it test app. And I'll make it for an iPhone only to keep things nice and easy. And I think that's good design to kind of force the size or limit the size of screens that you're dealing with. Pick a place to save it, say create. And again, I'll force the the aspect ratio as well, just portrait and upside down, no landscape here. Now Xcode can seem very overwhelming, but um, after a while you do get used to where everything is. So you've kind of got three views here in the middle and on the sides, and you could turn those things on and off to, uh, to make your life a little easier at times. And the first thing we're gonna do here, well, first I'll go down this list just to give you a good idea of what's going on, a brief overview, and then we'll import some graphics. So in this folder is where our app is. This app delegate is kind of the entry point for the application. So it kind of tells you when the app starts and there's some functions where you could do things, you know, when that app goes into the background or it's about to become active again and, and things like that. So you could do a little housekeeping and that's all pre-made for you. We selected a single view application. So we've got one view controller and here's the code for that but uh, don't be too concerned because we've got a visual editor as well. So here's our main storyboard with a view controller because we selected single view app. And if you click here on this first button there, then you'll see over here, um, here's another menu. So you could scroll through all of these and do all sorts of different things, but we want that guy right there. And that's where you select what class this storyboard scene is attached to. Okay, so this is called a scene and it's always attached to some bit of code and it's connected to this view controller class. And you do that by clicking on this and then right here you could select which class you want to attach that to. So that's how all of that works. Let's get some custom graphics in here. So select this assets and then I'll just uh, move this over here. I've got some some folders and some graphics set up here. So I'll just select all these and pull them over and that'll take a second to get itself sorted out and then we could start making our interface. Okay, so we've got all of our graphics imported here so we can make this full screen again and get started. So basically I've got a folder with logos in it. I've got some buttons in here as well, a bunch of transports and I should have different sizes for each of these but um, you'll see in a minute why that's not so important for this application, except for these tab bar icons. So over here on these tab bar icons, we'll be using uh, the Apple menu that you may be familiar with, like an Apple tab bar at the bottom of an app, and those need to have specific sizes. So three times is 75 by 75, two times is 50 by 50, and one time is 25 by 25. And then you need to give those special names, those files, and pull them in, and then that's called a graphics set. So you'll see in a minute what all that means. So let's go back to the storyboard. And then down here on the right, this is where you select different things to put on onto your storyboard. So let's uh, zoom out a bit so we have some room to work with. And then down here in this filter, I'll type tab bar and we'll find the tab bar controller and pull that over. So we'll just drag that guy over here and place it right next to the other view controller. And then we'll zoom back in a bit. And this arrow here is the entry point for our application. So when our app launches, that's where it'll start. So I'm gonna take this arrow and move it over to the tab bar controller. Cool. And then actually, I'm just gonna delete that view controller because we don't really need it. So this tab bar controller gives you a menu on the bottom and it uh, takes care of all of the page navigation for you. And to change these things, to change these items, we'll just click on that item. And then you'll see here, 
we've got some options to deal with. So I'll go over to this attribute. This is called the attribute inspector. And under image, we'll select the image we want to put in there. And those are the ones that I got ready for, for my tab bar. And I'll select one of those. So I think I had the home screen. So I'll just type in home and hit enter. And there we go. So we've got the home screen there. On the second one, um, let's put a display on there. So I've got the display ready. No, nope, that's the wrong display. That one, no, it's this one there. So there we go. We've got a nice size display. So on this tab bar, the sizing is really important because we're using kind of a, a already prepared for us um, graphic element, this, this menu tab bar. So we need to have those sizes correct. So if I want to add another item to this menu and another view here, then I'll go here and search for a, a view controller. So a view controller we could think of as a page. Right, that's in kind of what we're used to dealing with is pages. So a view controller is very similar to that. So I'll make sure my view controller is selected. I'll press the control key and then click on tab bar controller. And then I can drag that over to my view controller. And now I'm creating a segue. So I select what kind of segue and I want this relationship segue. And then that will add a new item to this menu bar and it'll create the transition for me. And then when I select this, I could go over here and select what, oh, I'll select the actual menu bar item, and then I could select an image for that. And I'll say the Apple logo. So here I've got a home button, a display, and an Apple logo. Cool, so this will actually run for us the simulator in Xcode is pretty awesome. You press this play button, you could select uh, what, what size phone you wanna deal with and press the play button and then the simulator will start and you could test your code pretty quickly. So we could have a quick look at what it looks like right now. And we'll, we'll get rid of this right here. And we could see that we've got these three items on the bottom and we could navigate between them. And this, would, this actually does change the uh, the view that you're seeing. So let's add some buttons to this and see how that looks. So we'll just go down here to the view um, to this menu down here and type in button. So we'll select a button. I've got this zoomed in now and I want the text to appear on top of the button. So I'll just select a background for this. And I've got a rectangle somewhere in there. Yeah, so we'll take rectangle and we'll say aspect fill. Kind of make that a little bigger. And then we could change the text, the color, of course. We'll make that white. And we'll change this font color. We'll change the font to something a little more interesting. And I don't know, change the font size and make it bold. And we'll change that text to input one. So there we go. So now we've got an input select button and we could copy and paste that and put some of those in there. And maybe I want another button with no text on it or the text underneath it. So then I'll, I'll remove that text and then we'll say image and I'll look for my power on button. So power on and we could resize that guy. And over here with this ruler, we could actually put in the width and height. So I'll say 100 by 100, All right? And then we could copy and paste that and kind of line things up a little bit. And this will be a power off button. So I'll go back here to the attributes and change the, uh, change the icon to power off. And then we'll add some labels under there. Say label, put a label underneath there, line it up. And we'll say power on. And then we'll do the same thing for our power off button. So 
just really quickly, just to give you an idea of what it's like to work in Xcode and add a few buttons and some, some labels and things like that. And then you could run this in your editor or your simulator, sorry, and see how it looks. And there you go. So you've got a bunch of buttons, you can press on them and do stuff. But wait a minute, they're not doing anything yet. So we've got some page flips or view controller segues in Xcode talk. We've got some buttons on our touch panel or our iPhone and we want to do stuff with them. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, remember that every one of these storyboards or scenes could have their own bits of code. So this view controller doesn't do anything yet. So we could, we could rename this and let's say, let's say home view controller. So we'll call that the home view controller. And if we wanted to make a new file, we would just say, uh, add a new file. And, and that would add a file to this. But we've already got one here, so we'll use that. And it's home view controller. So let's go back to the storyboard and make sure that we connect this to that class. And we do that over here. And we select the class and we call it home view controller. And there it is. So now this is connected to that class. Now here things get a little more interesting. So I'm going to get rid of this hierarchical view in the storyboard by clicking right here. So that thing is actually really handy when you're trying to select items so you can see exactly what you're doing. But we'll get rid of that for now. And we'll open up up here in the upper right, the assistant editor. So we're going to select the home view controller and the main storyboard. So there we go. So now I've got these side by side and I could press the control key, click on a button and then drag that over to my code, let go. And then I've got some options to deal with here. So when I say outlet, then that'll just create a variable for that button. Uh, but we want to create an action because we want to know when it's pressed. So I'll say the connection is an action. I'll give it a name. I'll call it select input one. And here you've got some more options, different types, but it's it's a UI button. And here you've got the different events. So touch up inside. So that would be a tap. But here you've got all the different things that you could deal with. Um, you know, uh, touch down, touch up, you could see when somebody drags on it. If it's a slider, you use value changed, but we we'll just use touch up inside for now. And then we'll hit connect. And then we'll get a nice bit of code here and then we could do something. So when that happens, so this is going to send to us whenever that button gets pressed and here we could do some code. So I don't have this set up for now, but normally we would have maybe a TCP client set up that talks directly to our receiver or to some kind of network converter. So we could do serial or IR, or maybe we just have a TCP server connected to an AMX or Crestron processor or something like that. And then we would say, so I'm just gonna say TCP client, it's not set up. And then you would have dot, I don't know, send message or whatever the function is. And there you would be able to send off your message to whatever device it is. And that's the basic idea of how you would set up an app to control your AV system with Xcode. So I hope this gave you a little overview. We'll be getting more deeply into this as time goes on and I plan on doing some webinars. So sign up for the newsletter and I'll let you know when that webinar is gonna be. And I hope this was helpful. Take care.